I can't get enough of it. It's That's changing wonderful. lives. It's changing lives and it's digestible for anyone in any walk of life. Um, even for the uncertain, you know, let the work speak for itself. Um, which for me happens a hundred percent of the time. I don't think I've ever had anyone on my table that they didn't feel something yeah. beautiful within their body moving. Right. I'm trying to get more people to just do something a little different, maybe do something a little unusual. Right. Um, if, if you're already familiar with this sort of thing, then go out and do it because you know it works. So today we have with us Taylor Jones. She's a cranial sacral therapy practitioner. Um, so nice to see you. How nice are you to today? I'm good. I'm good. good. I'm doing wonderful. Doing really well. So um, yeah, I, I wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit and get a little bit more better understanding of what cranial sacral therapy, what it is. I've, I've been hearing about it for years. Um, you know, you actually gave me a session as you know, <laughs> about, uh, um, I guess, a week or two ago. And it was really fantastic. It was so fun. That being said, I mean, I felt a lot. I experienced a lot. And the, the effects, I mean, stayed with me for some time. I mean, it really, um, really worked with my energies a good bit. Um, but I don't really understand what it is or what it does or how it works or even what the maybe science or philosophy or ideas are around it. Um, but, but it certainly is effective based on my experience and what I've heard other people's experience have been. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, of course. Um, so cranial sacral therapy is really interesting. It was developed, developed in the 1970s. Um, and so the interesting thing about it, um, it has a, it has both very scientific qualities and very spiritual energetic qualities about it. Um, I love, I love cranial sacral therapy because my, my brain, my, my brain wants to logically wrap around making sense of things. Sometimes we can't always make sense of things. Um, and I'm okay with that, but I want to be able to have something tangible that I can understand and, and, and communicate with other people. Right. Um, so cranial sacral therapy, I work actually with the entire body. In regards to a client coming in, the first thing that is on my mind and the first thing that I usually look for um, are blockages within the body. And let me, let me explain. Yes. So um, with movement, when there's movement within the body, whether it's a pulse, heartbeat, all that, all that movement in the body is signs of life. Um, and so that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a pulse, a vibration, a tangible vibration. Okay. Um, so all day long, we have the cerebral spinal fluid that goes from the sacrum all the, all the way up to the, to the cranium and nourishes it, goes back down, recycles itself, all the bad stuff gets exited out of the body. It just goes all day long. So instead of there being a pulse, there is a feeling of movement within the body and it's tangible. Everyone is different. So the, 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 the vibration that I feel, it almost feels like a pulse, but it's not in the same way we would feel like if we we're feeling for a heartbeat, it's a very different sort of pulse. Okay. So for me, I'm looking for the pulse and I'm looking for if it's vibrant. So when, a, a client comes in, I'm checking for the vibration of their body, which is tangible. This is not, it's, it's energy, but it's also something that for someone who's only in their logical state of mind can swallow as well. I mean, I can even gotcha. do a session with you guys on how to feel the vibration of the pulse of the cranial sacral rhythm that goes throughout the body and feeds nourishes in the entire body. So if so, you know what to look for, you actually can feel and detect a kind of a secondary pulse of sorts. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So it's, it's that, that in itself is like a real thing. And that's what you're kind of, that, that's exactly. like the first step. Okay. Exactly. 
So when I go in, I actually can ask the body questions. Body, can you lead me to the first part of the body that needs most work? Would it be the shoulder? And the way that I get a yes or no, if it speeds up, it's a no. And the rhythm actually tangibly speeds up. When it gives wow. me a yes, it slows down. Regardless of how the person has worked on themselves, they're they're in my they're on my table for a reason. So I'm wanting to get to the root of it. I don't want to just cause them to relax because anyone can relax on a table after a really hard day. Anyone can fall asleep on a table after a really long day. But I want that, I want to bring that piece, that parasympathetic and be curious around the why their body is not able to hold on to the parasympathetic, if that's the case. So I'm able to go throughout the body. Where is it? What's happening? What's going on in their life? Is it, is it sadness? Is it depression? And honestly, the body always tells me a yes or no, as long as I'm very clear. So that can get for hmm. people very woohoo, but it's actually very scientific because I'm actually feeling a tangible real vibration of what's going on within the body hmm. so it's like a biofeedback or a biorhythm so yep. I'm, I'm familiar with very familiar with muscle testing you can kind of tap mm. into the unconscious um I really can yeah and i, I guess this that. is so interesting what, what's that i've always wanted to get into muscle testing because that sounds very uniquely related yeah, it's an amazing tool. It, it really, really is. I have a fair amount on, on this website about uh, people talking about muscle testing. It is kind of like a biofeedback, bio rhythm um, yeah. reflection. It really and, is. And I guess that's along the lines of what you're doing. Um, yeah. So do you have, do you have any um, interesting stories or experiences or have you yeah. witnessed different uh, clients of yours or others that have come away with like huge shifts? Um, so I'd love to hear something about that. And I know that you had even mentioned that many times you can find out not only when a block occurred, well, I mean, you, you can find out where a block is, but you can then also find out many times when it occurred. And Absolutely. Yeah. some of the most profound blocks often happen when you're very young and you can yeah. just like retrieve that information. And that's to me, that's, that's pretty wild, but um, you know, I, I, I have heard many stories about just the wonders of this practice. And, I, you know, I'd love to hear a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know that uh, recently I had a woman come in and she had been dealing with migraines since she was like super young. She, she's around like 27 and been had been dealing with um, headaches since she was in the eighth grade they progressed into migraines after she had um, a concussion and a car accident in her early 20s. So she was actually looking for physical relief, which is what we can provide. I remember for the first four times that she came in, there was a lot of emotion that was trapped within her body. Um, it, or, as early as like even to her being a toddler, I was coming to find, because I'm able to even actually get dates, people involved. And a lot of times the body won't give me, sometimes it won't answer my questions. It will not give me. And sometimes that's the body's way of respecting the person in order for me not to know their complete story. Sometimes the body wants to give me a complete story. Sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't matter as long as I get the emotion of what it's been, of how and, and what is that, what exactly is trapped within the body. So after about five times, I'm, maybe not even five times, I wanna say probably after the third one, she calls me and she says, Taylor, I still have a headache, <laughs> but I actually, I have not felt hope for joy in a very long time. And I have hope that I will have joy in a hmm. way that I have not felt before. And wow. I'm actually happy for longer periods of time. Wow. So this woman was dealing with, you know, depression as well. And, and, and she just, and like I said, she came in for the migraines. She didn't come in for anything else. So my focus was on her migraines, right. but her body had other plans because there was more important issues at hand. Gotcha. And yes, she does not have migraines anymore. She worked Good. through a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. You know, I, I don't think science really gets a lot of, really can fully 
capture how a lot of the subconscious work works. Um, so many people, you know, really have a hard time getting their head around it. But, uh, you know, what if we just were like, hey, you know, if it works, let's do it. Or, or maybe just open our eyes to the possibility that it could work, even if we don't understand it. And let's, let's try it. Let's try something new, try something different. How boring life would be without a little mystery. Well, that's you know? true. Yeah. yeah. I totally agree with you on that point. It's like, we can't figure out everything, right. even though we'd love it, but then it would just be boring. That is true. Yes. <laughs> a lot of times when people have gone through trauma, and I'm not saying one trauma is worse than the other, but I'm saying that there's a point sometimes with people where the shame, the embarrassment, the trauma is so bad. Uh, it, the experience was so, so bad for them that to speak about it almost kind of reinvites the trauma all over again. Mm, right. That That's why cranial sacral therapy is so beautiful because you're not talking. You're allowing the body to talk at its pace. So when I get the stories, I'm getting it in sacraments as I'm moving the emotion, not the memory. So I want to explain here. There was another client of mine who came in and um, she had been um, unfortunately molested as a child. And this is something that she had not shared with anyone, but she knew she had to deal with it somehow. So what cranial sacral therapy does, it almost it doesn't take the memory away, um, but what it does, it takes the sting out of it to where you can logically look at it, kind of like from the outside in, mm -hmm. looking at it and you're able to work through it. It's not the, 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 the trigger, the sting, the right. even shadow work I have come to find where it's, it takes, it just softens it just right. enough to where you can actually work through it. So are you, I guess, also in like intuitive? I mean, you're, you're picking up subtle energies in, oh, in the body. Yeah. And absolutely. you're, you're given messages by, you know, these pulses increasing or decreasing. Right. Um, but do you also just kind of connect and know what needs to happen? Or is it, is it really truly just tuning into the body or maybe a combination of the two? Yeah, you know what, um, with this practice, you want to go in with a curiosity. Sometimes spirit will give me will give me an insight onto what's going on, but I hold that very loosely. Because a lot of times when we meet people, we're like, we can kind of get a take, we can kind of get a, an insight into what that person may be going through. Like, do they look sad? Do they look happy? Do they look depressed? Do they look excited? Do they look hyper? And so as a human being that comes with being human, we can kind of, right. Kind of gauge what that, you know, it's, it's judgment, but we can kind of gauge and feel out what that person may be going through. Right. So um, a lot of times I don't know it's spirit until after the process um, until after the session, because if we think if we have an agenda and, and into what's going on with the person, we'll never really truly hear what the body's telling us. So going in with the curiosity and I've come to find that just kind of having that sort of stance with life itself kind of opens you up to a bigger possibility of what could possibly happen. You know, I love that. You're exactly right. <laughs>